Power BI workspaces. What are we supposed to do with them? How do we divide them up? Should we divide them up? And what's the point of them all anyway? So you want to be a Power BI developer. We can see it cross highlights, fact and dimension. The visual calculations, so we've got time intelligence within there. Let's just get right down to it. Let's start simple. So our Power BI workspaces are going to exist, aren't they, across our landscape? Okay? And the analog would always be the same, right? These are really like your files and folders or your folders, sorry, that you have in your traditional file system or something like that. And because they're folders, that you should think of them as a permission structure. So that's really where I think they, they work. And if you do that, then it makes sense what Geordie Consulting recommend and what we fully support as well, which is that you kind of divide them up functionally. So for data workspaces, in terms of where you're going to process and do ETL, so typically those would be data flows. They could also now be other fabric work streams that you have, data flows gen two or some of the other stuff, um, ADF workloads, all that kind of thing to really pull something through. You can then have that produce tables and those tables can be consumed using a view access, using the view access rights. So you have then a permissions bubble, don't you? That these people can edit it, these people can view it, and that way, hopefully, you're not going to suddenly get the point where someone makes a change and that breaks a report downstream elsewhere. Those views of data can then be consumed by semantic models. And again, semantic models, you might say, well, we're going to put the models in different workspaces, one per model. You might again go, well, most will go in one place and we're going to have like an HR one, which is for obvious reasons, more secure. And you might put that somewhere else. There's, you know, there is no real hard and fast rule, I think, with this. This is very much a case of what works within your business. And the reason why you'd probably end up with most of them together is because chances are it's going to be the same group of professionals who are in your center of excellence for data who are going to be doing everything. So why would you separate it? And then lastly, we're going to have the app or the visualization workspace area. So these app workspaces are going to be, again, functional. So you might have a sales app where all of the sales team go. Here's all of the sales reports. You might have regional breakdowns within there. But the question would always be, is it sensible to break it down regionally? And if it is, potentially you could separate them out and have different apps as opposed to having different audiences within the apps. Again, that's going to come down to you. If you go with the different audiences within the app, that will work. But you'll probably find you're going to end up with an audience for each region and an audience for everything because that's the way things roll. Um, you could go down the route of saying, well, we're going to use role based access controls, which you can do. And then that would define it. So you would have one app with one audience and their simple act of accessing it is where the permissions would be applied. There's a multitude of ways and there isn't a way of putting down and saying this is the one way of doing it. It's what works for you as a business. So, you know, you can start to piece together a strategy that allows you to separate out those workloads, functionally split them and then manage them going forward and make sure that everyone is getting the most out of their data. So let us know down below what you think and don't forget, get in touch, arrange a meeting, yeah, the link is down below or might show the QR code up there or up there where you can scan in, book an introduction to Geordie Consulting meeting and start your data journey.